Hi again, everyone. I'm Ali Matthews, and this is The Narcissistic Resistance. And this resistance video is sponsored by contribution from Christopher, a.k.a. Monte Cristo. And here's his story. Dear Ali, thank you for your insight on my inquiry regarding my situation with my former church. I have decided not to not to try to go after Candlewood and let them go completely, especially since their days are already numbered. I had done a video for Chris back in January titled The Narcissist Cannot Take On More Than One at a Time. And he was part of one of these cult churches called Candlewood under the guise of being a born-again Christian where he suffered immense abuse. One of my old friends from there already has a plan to get out upon hearing my story, among other things that happened. With Candlewood's example alone, as I have worded it, I am beginning to see why no contact is the best option. However, I am also seeing some things that needed to get out of my system as a result of bringing my initial question to your attention, specifically some of which point to why I was going after Candlewood in the first place. My narcopath father was a very aggressive abuser, as I described in my last entry to you. He violated physically, emotionally, sexually, and psychologically like a freight train to my heart, drive, joy, and self of self, sense of self. He wanted to, in Kurt Cobain's words, beat it out of me and implant a version of himself as if trying to create a mechanical arm to better baby himself with. The reason I am confident that he is a narcissistic sociopath is because he seemed to have a laser-like focus on what his abuse did to me and used those emotional and psychological results to his advantage to sabotage me further. Upon already oppressing me from my true self, individually, and thoughts, leaving me confused, hurt, anxious, fearful, and angry, he had two strategies. One, he either told me complete distortions about what to expect in life only to leave me crushed or to blindside with another lie labeled as truth to attack me with shame. Thanks to him, I learned discipline, guidance, wisdom, and at times truth to be, to be abuse, fear mongering, and manipulation. Or two, he would tell me complete bullshit about life and how to deal with it that always resembled his narcissistic neurosis, paranoia, and abuse. He especially preached aggression and being combative as somehow being more effective than being peaceful or kind, even in subtle ways like his famous saying, whoever blanked up ought to be shot, as if it was a con just a common saying. Both tactics were often used simultaneously, either way making it a simple matter of batter, brain, rinse, and repeat. Despite being very intellectual, passionate, empathetic person with musical and artistic proclivities, I feel like I have trouble with some of the most basic things in life. I feel on edge in conversations with my closest friends to the point where I felt like I could not be myself. I have lost jobs where I otherwise performed outstandingly, outstandingly astoundingly well due to my post-traumatic stress building to the point of emotional collapse. The mere mention or reminder of anything related to my dad, stepmother, and NPD and ASPD, even in your videos, give me immense panic attacks that I need to combat with profuse prayer to dissipate. In short, I know that everything my dad told me was wrong and that he played me like a board game, but often the only way I know he is what he supposedly taught me. Hold on. In short, I know that everything my dad told me was wrong and that he played me like a board game, but often the only way I know is what he supposedly taught me. I either revert back to that or to anxiety, fear, or uneasiness in not knowing how to go about it. Despite all my potential and capabilities, I feel like because of this pitiful excuse for a man, let alone a parent, I need to relearn life. Even though I have been making progress thus far, I still have quite a ways to go. 
hopefully you can offer me some helpful advice despite my summation of my issue possibly being too vague. Sincerely, Christopher Taylor. It doesn't matter what the issue is at this point, Gus. It doesn't matter how vague it is or not. You're at a moment in life or you came to a moment in life where you realize you have no real identity because of this guy. None. None. And I have to question with everything you went through with your church that you're relying on prayer. I'm not saying to reject your prayer or your faith or your religion. But I would wonder if you, as you're saying, telling me you're triggered by these things that's costing you jobs and employment. And even my videos are triggering you. Then how is praying not? This all happened at this Candlewood church, which was all based around religion, prayer, abuse, all of that. Sometimes when you go no contact, you have to go no contact from all of it. Now, maybe you need to take a break from it for a while, because there's a very good possibility the thing that is triggering you how do you sit there and pray? Now, I understand how you do it if you have faith and, and that's what you believe. But prayer and religion is what was the basis of your abuse to begin with. So right off the bat, you're in this internal struggle that you're trying to use what abused you to kind of lift you out of it. And I don't think you can do that. Not right now. I think there, there could be a time you can, but I think you need to step away from all of it, Chris. Everything you know about yourself in your past, you need to say, because I don't know who the hell I am. I don't know who I am, what I want, what makes me happy, because I was never allowed to even think about it. You're just coming to that point right now. Do you understand? And it is a real confusing time when you're doing that in your 20s, your 30s, and your 40s. I was 34 before I realized I didn't know a goddamn thing about myself and I hadn't lived a day of my own life. What I am finding is, and I hate to... Um, I hate to relate sports to religion, but to many people, sports is religion. And I'll tell you this about myself. And I, I noticed I've gotten a lot better since doing this. You know, when I lived up, and it partially is where I live because, but it's not that hard. It wouldn't be that hard because I've done it before down here. You know, I was, I'm a huge, Yankees fan, huge Jets fan, NFL. But I'll tell you this, I haven't watched a full Yankees game in two years. I didn't watch one game of Major League Baseball last year. I haven't seen a game this year. And what I would find is, as I was watching those Yankee games, and I didn't even realize it, is because my father was such a big baseball thing and a Yankee fan, is that the thing that, even though I enjoy it and love baseball, and I've even backed off on football a lot, too, this past season, there wasn't a time where I didn't see every second of every Jets game. Now it's like, at, if they're good, and I can get there, and I want to see it, I'll go see it, but I'm not going out of my way to do it. And it's more with baseball than football, because my father was more baseball than football. And even though I love baseball, I love the Yankees, and I hate to compare sports to religion, I realized even though I enjoyed it, it was still triggering to me. 
And I didn't make an active decision to say, ah, that's it, no more baseball. I didn't even realize it was happening. I just got to a point where I just got to a fuck it. And I realized I was triggered a lot less. I realized I was... Because I couldn't watch the Yankees without thinking about my douchebag fucking father. Probably the same thing that's happening to you when you pray, I would imagine. A clean start means a clean start, Chris. So in a lot of times, that means you need to walk away from a lot of things. And you especially, and I understand that faith and all that becomes, is important to you. But you also have to look at the reality of faith was used, religion was used, as a vehicle for your abuse. So for you to try to then turn around and use that faith to try to pull yourself at, it's, I don't think it's gonna work. I don't think it can work. I'm not saying you need to reject your faith permanently, but you need to find out, Chris, on your own, who you are first, and then address the faith thing. Because you might find out like, eh, I was using it as a crutch, and not only a crutch, I was using it to allow my father and my abusers to continue to abuse me by proxy and trigger me and cost. It's like that constant anchor and reminder. So starting over is tough, especially at an older age, but cleaning your slate means cleaning your slate. I hope that makes sense to you, and I hope that helps. So thank you for your contribution, and thank you for another story, Chris. I really appreciate it. Thank you to everybody watching. Please leave any opinions or advice in the comment section below. And if you want your story read on the channel, you have a topic you'd like me to cover, a narcissist you'd like to expose, or you'd like to set up a private Skype chat, phone call, have a private video made, Facebook chat, or you'd like to just support the channel or sponsor a video for someone who can't afford it, you know what to do with the PayPal and email links in the description box. And if you're still unclear, wait for the final link to pop up on this video. That'll take you to my instructional video that'll walk you through that process. Please be sure to share and like this video wherever you can. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and click the subscription bell to be notified of all my video uploads. I'm Ali Matthews. This is the Narcissistic Resistance, and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.